Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. This morning, uh, uh, dear listeners and dear watchers, yes, um, I drove here because I'm going to talk with David Icke and uh, I looked up the sky and I saw the moon during the day. Sometimes you have it in the morning, you see, still in the blue sky, the big round moon. Fantastic. And I thought, oh, that's a great question for you. Because you have lately told us all that the moon is not, is, is fake. It's not a real moon, it's not a planet. It's being made up. It's a machine, or what? 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 What is this? Well, uh, what I'm saying is, it's um, it's one of two things. It's either a hollowed out planetoid. Um, a what? A hollowed out planetoid. You know, it's, uh, what 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 the name they give to something that they don't perceive to be big enough to be a planet, but it's still a body. Okay. Uh, or um, it's been created from scratch. Um, and I, I was just talking to someone else about that a few minutes ago that the world's not just a little bit not like we thought it was. It's nothing like we thought it was. And we are going to realize, some are beginning to, that the size of the box that we've been living in, in terms of perception of self and the reality we're experiencing, is beyond tiny, beyond fractional. Um, we've been living in a, a box, in effect, compared with what there is to know about the size of a pea. And thus, if we perceive possibility from a box the size of a pea, we are going to dismiss 99% uh, of what's happening in the world outside of the pea. And my um, attitude is, I want to know what's happening in the world. I want to know what's going on so we can do something about it and I, I, I have this passion to know what's going on just because I want to know what's going on as well and um, so I'm going to pursue um, any area that justifies itself to me that it needs to pursuing and um, what people make of that is entirely up to them sure I've been pretty taken aback to be honest as I've gone around the world um, talking about this in the last few uh, weeks in London, Czech Republic, Spain, Lisbon, America, etc. Um, I've been taken aback at how many people have gone, well it sounds amazing mate, but actually what the way you, 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 you've explained it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, because we accept things as they are, often because they were like that when we were born and we tend to think, well, this is how life is, this is what it is, it's the moon, mate, isn't it? But when you start pursuing these things, where you say, okay, um, let's ask some questions about it, <clears throat> uh, and, and you, you, you realise that what seems to be straightforward, like it's a moon, and it's a moon, mate, is actually nothing like straightforward. You also realise, and I, I found this with, um, with so many areas of my research in the scientific field, that so much of what is accepted scientific fact, when you play it back into where it came from, turns about out to be someone's theory, which through constant repetition is accepted as fact. Yeah, right. And so <clears throat> um, the question I, I, I looked at was, was where did the moon came from, come from, or where, where is it perceived to have come from? And if you asked... Um, a mainstream scientist, he'd probably say um, a Mars-type planet came along, smacked into the Earth when it was forming, it, a, a chunk went away, uh, broke off and became the Moon. Uh, and that's known as the Big Whack Theory, or the Whack Theory. Um, but then that didn't make uh, sense um, through physics and various other things. So they had to um, uh, get their quart into a pint pot, like a big fat man trying to get into a you know pair of trousers too small. We've got to make this fit, okay? Right. Okay. Now, okay. <clears throat> now, just, just, just put some elastic in. Put some elastic in the trousers, okay? Now, yeah. everyone, pull. Hey, oi, click. Yeah. It, he's in. Yeah. See, it's true. See? That's yeah. what it's like. Yeah. See, that's yeah. what it's like. No, yeah. no, no. That's not the size of trousers that man should be wearing. You've just forced him into them. Yeah. And it's the same with the thing about the moon because 
when the, when the whack theory didn't work out, they came up with a double whack theory, which right. is that the, the, the Mars type planet hit the Earth and then came back and had another, another smack at it. The old one too. Um, and, and, and then you look at other areas, I mean, putting it in simple terms, they have no idea where the moon came from. No. And then when you pursue it even <clears> more, you find that um, scientists have said over the years that one, for instance, that the only thing you can say for certain about the moon is its observational error. It's not really there because it shouldn't be there. It's far, far too big, um, over 2,000 miles across, uh, um, far too big to be a satellite of a, of a planet the size of the Earth where I'm, with our magnetic field. Um, and uh, then there comes the evidence, which I, I, I put in the book and talk about in the, in the events, that, that, um, that, it, that it's hollow. Not, not completely hollow, but to a very large extent hollow. Um, and how when they've smacked it with, um, with, with, with missiles um, to, uh, uh, where they, after they've put seismometers on the moon, they've whacked it with, with, with objects of, 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 of massive impact. And they found that, uh, to, um, to quote one scientist at NASA, the moon rang like a bell. Yeah, yeah, right. And there was no <clears throat> reason why it should do that unless it was hollow. Yeah, right. And so I, I go into this, and I'm still pursuing it, but um, there's something fundamental about the moon um, which uh, is not the story that we've been given. And I, my, my suggestion um, is that the Earth is being controlled in terms of our perception from the moon. And interestingly, when I, I then took it to the next stage and started looking at um, uh, ancient legends and accounts and beliefs about the moon, um, it all synced with, with that same um, idea because the Zulu people, for instance, in Africa, they say that the moon uh, only came here, uh, quote, hundreds of generations ago. And they symbolize it as an egg. Yeah, yeah, right. And of course, when modern anthropologists go along or whatever, and they say, oh, these people say the moon's like an egg or is an egg. They say, oh, these are primitive people, you know. But what they're doing, um, the reason they say symbolize it as an egg, is because they say it was hollowed out. Yeah, right. Um, which again <coughs> fits this whole theory. Uh, in in um, 1970 or the early 1970s, two scientists from the Soviet Academy of Sciences uh, wrote a, a detailed article in a, a Russian magazine saying that the, the, the moon is not um, a heavenly body, not a natural body. And they said that it was a hollowed out planetoid probably. And interestingly, um, there are um, various metals, etc., that have been found on the moon that have never been found in a natural environment. They, they, they are created. And um, that one scientist said that the moon is inside out. What's on the outside should be on the inside, which again fits in with this hollowed out planetoid thing. And, you know, when you look at um, the, um, the Star Wars movies, where they had the concept of the um, Death Star, which you know was kind of a moon. It looked yeah, like right. a moon, mm -hmm. but actually it was it was not a, a, a natural body. It was constructed. And when when you're dealing with people like George Lucas, the producer of um, the Star Wars movies, who is a massive insider, um, a lot of these so-called science fiction uh, movies, etc., not least things like The Matrix come from a, uh, a, an understanding of the way things are uh, and they're based on fact, not fiction. And for me, um, we're looking at a, um, a situation where uh, the moon was brought here. When it came, um, because of its effect on the earth, uh, it created um, geological catastrophe, which is um, detailed in all ancient accounts all over the world. Right. They talk about <clears throat> the time when the earth turned over, which of course, something like the moon coming in, it would make the earth uh, turn over. I the mean, X, uh, Yeah, because oh, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the moon is uh, fundamental in the um, angle that the earth is at and the speed that it spins. So just by being there without anything else, and I think there's a lot more else which I talk about, um, it's having a fundamental effect on, on human life, our perception of time, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, uh, the seasons. The seasons are, are, are in effect created by the, the, the influence of the moon. It has massive effects on, um, on, on the water of the earth and we are 60-70% water. It has um, a massive impact on the hormonal system including things like the pineal gland um, and the pituitary gland which together um, make up what people call the third eye, the sixth sense. Um, so it, it's having a massive effect just by being there yeah. on life on Earth. And, yeah, and that's, what I'm no, saying is that actually th there's, there's stuff coming from the moon which, um, which is affecting our ability to perceive reality on the scale that there were before. I, I'm using the, the analogy, and it's beyond an analogy really, um, it's very much uh, the theme that if you um, look at the World Wide Web, the, the internet, it's a collective reality. Right. And uh, in places like the Netherlands or Britain or America or wherever, you go on the internet and you can pretty much, pretty much go everywhere on the internet that, and, and, and explore that entire reality. But if you're in China, the internet's been firewalled off. So yeah. there's vast tracts of the internet, the collective reality, that they can't perceive, they can't access. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is the effect of the moon, uh, not just its... If, uh, if you like physical presence, but what's coming from the moon uh, is acting like a firewall, like a hack. And what humans could perceive before in terms of the breadth and scale of reality, they're not perceiving now. And this is one reason, perhaps a major reason, why the frequency range of human perception on, on the so-called physical level is, is, is beyond a fraction. I mean, according to uh, mainstream science, um, of the mass matter uh, that exists in this universe, visible light um, is, is almost imperceivable. I mean, even the whole electromagnetic spectrum is said to be about 0.005% of what there is in this universe. And visible light, of course, is, is, is a, a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So what we're perceiving in terms of what there is to perceive in this in this universe is is fractional yeah. and i'm saying that that is not how it used to be we used to have a much greater breadth and expansion of of, of what we could perceive and and i'm saying that there's so much so-called out there that we're not seeing that is out there and maybe there's things we are seeing that are not out there. But somebody put it there then in order to control it. Yes, they, exactly, exactly that. This is what I'm. This is what I'm saying. Exactly that. And you know, if people find it hard to believe that um, that, that frequency fields, for instance, coming from the moon, and I'm talking about technological know-how that's kind of light years beyond what what, what we perceive as possible, um, and, and 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 that um, those frequencies are suppressing our ability to perceive what we normally perceive. Well, I was reading a mainstream science magazine um, a few months ago called New Scientist in Britain. And it was saying that um, since America switched from analog television to digital television, astronomers have been able to see for the first time in modern times, probably the first time ever given the technology they've needed to be developed, um, whole galaxies in a frequency range that they couldn't see before and that there was a race against time to, to, to see as, and, and gather as much information as they could before those f former analog TV frequencies were sold off to mobile phones uh, companies and other people uh, that, that, that would fill that band again and, and, and shut out all those galaxies. Now, let's just think about that. Even on the the level, and compared with the, the level I'm talking about, even on the level of the Stone Age technology that we have, in comparison to what's possible, astronomers could not see whole galaxies because Americans were watching the television. <laughs> right now, you take that <clears throat> onto the technological level that I'm talking about, and the idea that. Um, our perception possibilities can be blocked um, becomes, uh, you know, obviously possible. Yeah. 
But who's who's behind that then? Is there is there somebody or some planet or some? Well, and, 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 and I would say this because you know this is a never-ending journey down the rabbit hole. Yeah, right. That um, the, the the moon is not it. It's it's part of it. It's part of the control system, though as it would say, a fundamental part of it. Yeah. But no, because one of the things that became clear very early already that like uh, when we are born, we don't think. There's no thoughts. On a certain moment, they start to teach you. And what they teach you is a common story that religion and the state and royalty has put together in, the, in, in, in many centuries. And they create that as reality, you know? That's it. And on schools, we are trained, you know, totally, uh, uh, yeah, completely organized into a kind of automatic pilot so that like if you dare to uh, to to say something different then you're crazy or stupid exactly, or exactly. you get like a very bad uh, well, take, judgment. Take, you take, know. take the Chinese example. Mm -hmm. um, because of um, the firewalling of the internet right. in China, because of the censorship of the media in general in China, yeah then vast, vast numbers of Chinese people have a very, very li more limited and distorted um, perception of the world and themselves. And I'm saying that if you take that onto a global level, that is what is happening to humanity in general. Yeah. And when you talk about, uh, you know, what's behind it, you know, <laughs> after I had my, my own kind of explosive awakening 20 years ago, um, my life became a synchronistic... Um, a series of uh, experiences, uh, meetings with people, uh, coming across documents, books, and they were like puzzle pieces, and they were coming in in um, an order to, to to let me see most easily how they fitted together. So, for instance, a a subject would come into my life out of nowhere, and then suddenly that subject is everywhere in my life, coming at me from all angles. Yeah, right. And it's saying, "Look at this! Look at this! Look at this!" And so I, I've been, if you like taken through this sequence and it's a step-by-step -step sequence because I think if you opened your mind and took all in that we're not perceiving at the moment I think I think it would just blow you you mm. blow your gaskets yeah so it's being done in a, in a stage-by-stage way because of course it's not so, it's not so that we lost our power because the moment indeed you focus on a certain subject or object or whatever, it, 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 it explodes, it comes yeah. into your face, I mean, it comes to you. So we have, we have incredible power, except we have never learned how to use it. Yeah, I mean, we've, never, we've never learned that we have it, we find out almost exactly. by accident. Exactly. Yeah. But, but what happened was that the first few years after this started, um, all the information was about um, the five cents level of the conspiracy it was about banking scams, a, a network of families that controlled the pharmaceutical industry, that was engineering uh, uh, wars and, and, and fake terrorist events, right. all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then it moved into another sequence where reptilian entities came into, into it and suddenly reptilian entity information was coming at me from all angles, wherever I went in the world. How, how did it come for the first time? How did you discover well, it, well, it, reptilian it, it, it start, it start, creatures? It, it started out. Um, when I was traveling America in about 1996-97 and in um, 15 days, and I was in a different place every day going around talking, and in um, 15 days I met 12 separate people that told me the same story, basically the same story about how they'd seen people turn into reptilian entities and then come back to human. And of course you, you hear a few of these and you go, ooh dear, back burner with that one. And that's what I do, you know, instead of saying, oh that's ridiculous, that's rubbish, you go, all right, back burner, we'll see what comes. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and more and more came, and more and more came as I went around the world. And then I started realizing that these, these reptilian entities, these serpent gods as they were perceived, um, were widely, widely mentioned throughout the ancient world. And, and indeed the oldest form of religious worship, going back at least now, this is mainstream uh, science and, and what have you, uh, at least 70,000 years is, is the worship of the serpent. So, and then you, you see, it's like um, you, you unlock something, and when you unlock it, you start to see, uh, I guess in a way, or more than in a way, you're bringing something out of the subconscious to the conscious. For instance, you 
um, you say to someone, uh, do, do, do you remember when we went to the seaside at so-and-so that day a few years ago? And they go, no, I don't remember that. And then, uh, and then you prompt them and you say, oh yeah, you know, uh, Bill, Bill went on the donkey and fell off, don't you remember? Oh yeah. Now from the moment, through Bill falling off the donkey, you have opened that memory. Right. They can now reel off in detail what else happened that yeah, day, exactly. a day they couldn't even remember a few, a, a few minutes ago. Yeah. And so when this, this reptilian thing came into my, into my life, then you start to see right. um, the scale of it and also all the reptilian imagery around us in so many, so many different ways. And, and then I, as I was reading these ancient accounts, again and again, um, the arrival of these serpent gods was connected with great catastrophes on the earth. And it became clear that I didn't know how at the time, but I, I, just, I just, just knew that, that these reptilian entities had somehow caused these catastrophes that all the ancient accounts talk about, where the <clears> earth <throat> turned over, great geological events symbolized as things like the Great Flood and all the rest of it. Um, and of course, if the earth turned over, um, a planet that is dominated by oceans, then what you're going to create, you're going to create a fantastic, uh, unbelievable tidal wave. But uh, so I knew that they'd done it and, and all these accounts have connected them to it. But how on earth did they do it? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. And then when the moon came in, I realized um, um, how they did it. The moon, they brought the moon in. And, and as they brought the moon in, these catastrophes followed. And so it, the reptilians are from another planet? They're, 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 yeah, they're, they're, and when we talk about reptilians, it's like talking about humans. There's Chinese humans, there's, there's um, uh, black American humans, um, there are humans that, 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 that have an open heart and empathy, and, and in the same way, there are reptilian entities that, are, uh, that are, go across the great swathe of, of um, if you like, uh, perception and um, behavior. I'm, we're not, I'm not talking about anything that takes a reptilian form anywhere in the great beyond. I'm talking about a particular, particular group that, that, that have um, human control and vampiring off the efforts and the energy of humans as their goal. Um, and like I say, when you, you look at um, even some tribes around the world in various areas, they talk about the fact that their tribe goes back to before the time when the moon came. And um, these, uh, these moons and these um, reptilian entities appear to have a, a very clear, done many, many times, modus operandi. They target a planet, they bring the moons in, or a moon in, and that fundamentally, by its impact upon the planet, uh, brings an end to society on that planet as it was before. Um, and then, as it the, sounds a little bit like the Adam and Eve story. Well, I mean, you know, I, that's where the snake, you know, the reptilian. Well, um, well this is the thing, you know. I mean, I, I was um, destroys humanity. You know, <laughs> this the is Earth the, sort of paradise is gone. You know, and this is this is it's thrown out. This is this is the whole point. I was talking to someone earlier about this. Um, when you, you, you look at these ancient accounts of these serpent gods, or what, what the Zulus call the Chittahuri, the mm -hmm. children of the serpent, um, they are invariably connected with this theme. Again, you find it in the Bible, but you find it all over these uh, yeah. ancient uh, uh, cultures of the fall of man, the fall of humanity. Right. And, and, and this is what I'm, I'm suggesting strongly. Um, brought it about. And the modus operandi, like I say, is you bring these um, moons into a, a target planet. You, uh, by the impact upon the planet, end society as it was before. As the planet starts to um, recover, you then um, impact upon the uh, genetics of the target population. And um, the human body is a receiver transmitter of information. That's why um, it's, it's overwhelmingly, if you, if you, when you get deeper into it, it's a crystalline uh, receiver transmitter. And it ch they, they change the range of frequency right. that the human body transmitter is picking up um, so that you um, suppress the range of frequencies it can access. Um, and you connect that um, receiver transmitter 
to basically the frequencies that you're putting out from the moon and you're basically creating a sub-reality. Within the wider reality of the universe, you're creating a sub-reality. Absolutely the same in theme as the Chinese authorities mm -hmm. firewalling off the internet, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And um, I call this uh, frequency uh, uh, prison, the, the moon matrix. And this is one reason um, why scientists call 95% of human DNA junk DNA because they don't know what it does. Mm -hmm. It's why we use a fraction of the capacity of our brains. It's because we have been shut down uh, to large amounts of the universe that we used to perceive. What happens when people start to awaken to consciousness? Uh, I, I make this uh, very clear distinction between what I call consciousness, awareness, that infinite part of us, the eternal part of us. Beyond thinking. But yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's that part of us that people experience when they have near-death experiences and they're outside the body, exactly, but yeah. they're still perceiving. And not just still perceiving, perceiving on a vastly, vastly expanded range of, of, of perception. Uh, perceiving multiple realities at the same time, which we don't through the, through the body. And um, so, that's what I call consciousness, the infinite awareness. And then there's body-mind, which is um, the body computer system, as I call it, which is the vehicle through which consciousness experiences this reality. In the same way that um, we talk about going on the internet, but we don't go on the internet. The computer goes on the internet. We observe the internet through the computer. Exactly. Now, what, what the idea is, is to manipulate human self-identity to the point and um, suppress its perception to the point where it filters reality overwhelmingly, almost totally through the five senses, a very, very low level of awareness. Yeah, yeah. It's what you call thinking. Um, instead of knowing and, and perceiving on a much higher uh, level of um, awareness. That's so, why there's lots of meditation going on. Yes. Where you go beyond thinking, you know, where yes. you try to go beyond the, the all the learned vehicles here that dominate you, you know? Exactly, and, and what, I'm, what I'm saying is that once you start to open your mind to, to, to your greater consciousness, greater awareness, everything starts to vibrate quicker. Exactly. You start to change frequency. Yeah. As your frequency quickens and your point of attention, your point of observation, perception, moves out of the five senses alone into higher levels of awareness, um, you go beyond what, what, what I call the moon matrix. You go beyond this frequency range of, of suppression. And suddenly you're going, it's so obvious. Why didn't I see it before? Because you were in here before. Yeah. And now you're perceiving from another level. Right. Uh, and you're, you're, it, it's like, um, in effect, um, breaking the firewall or going beyond the Chinese firewall of yeah. the Chinese internet. Yeah. And suddenly you're seeing all these other levels of the internet and how it fits together, which you weren't seeing before. And this is why we're in a situation now. No accident, no coincidence, that at the, at the very time this awakening is happening, and my God it is, uh, around the world. Right. Um, the control system, which is the human expression of, I, I would say, the moon matrix, um, is, is throwing everything at us in terms of destabilizing the body computer through food additives and drink additives, through electromagnetic and microwave pollution, um, through um, suppression of um, freedoms, through wanting to get desperately things like microchips inside us to externally suppress the vibrational state of the body. Uh, all these things are being thrown at us now of all times because I, I was told um, time of my initial awakening 20 years ago, one of the first things I was told was, you're gonna go out on a world stage and reveal great secrets and all this stuff, all these things that are happening. But the, one of the key things I was told right at the start is, there's a vibrational change coming that is gonna wake humanity up from its amnesic state. Right. Uh, 20 years ago, there's no evidence of that. Um, and I, the first book I ever wrote um, I wrote it in 1990, it came out in 1991. I actually called the truth vibrations. 
and the truth vibrations was the name I gave to this vibrational change um, for two reasons. One, it was going to awaken people up to the truth about themselves and the world. And also another thing I was told at the time was that this vibrational information change in effect was going to have the, um, the effect of bringing to the surface all that had been hidden from us. 20 years ago, again, no evidence of that. Look at look, no. look now. Yeah. Uh, now, now the thing it's is, very fast. Very yeah. fast. It's getting yeah. faster, exactly as I told yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. The point of me telling you that, or one point, is that um, if I knew 20 years ago that this vibrational change was coming and its effect, how long has the bloody control system known? And it's been planning this over a very large amount of what we call time. So it hits maximum um, impact upon humanity at the time that this change is hitting humanity because they want to lessen its effect and this is the real reason yes um, microchipping is about electronic tagging and it's about uh, many many things of that kind but as a CIA scientist told me in 1997 um, uh, when he told me about things like nanotechnology that was outside the public arena overwhelmingly then um, he said it's not the um, messages going from the chip to the computer system mm -hmm. that is the prime reason for microchipping though it's one of them it's the ones it's the it's the mess it's the signals coming the other way to the chip because the body is um, a very very advanced highly sophisticated biological computer system right this is how they can put a chip in the brain and you can work a computer with your mind, no mouse necessary. Um, it's because although the, the level of sophistication is vastly different, the principle is the same. They're connecting two computer systems. Hmm. And thus, if they can get a microchip inside us, they can externally manipulate the computer system and dictate what it can receive and transmit. This is what it's all about. This is why... Would that mean also that if we die, then we can restart and then we start again? Well, I don't know about all that, but um, what, they, what they can do, as this yeah. scientist told me in 1997, once you've got the chip inside you, they can manipulate you yes. mentally, emotionally, yes. and physically, yes, yes. including taking you out yeah. from a distance. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, like um, in in the Matrix movies, where um, uh, if um, if the um, if if you kind of died in the um, in in the Matrix, then you kind of died, in, you know, in the in the in in the ship. Um, then it's it, it's a similar principle. That thing in the back of the head. If they get a microchip inside you, they can externally communicate with a microchip and destabilize the body systems enough to kill you. So basically, once the chip's inside you, then you're at the mercy of whoever yeah, controls exactly. the chip. Yeah. This is why, as I keep saying, yeah. um, if people, and this is, this is what this scientist said to me in 1997, tell people if they only say no to one thing, say no to the microchip. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's being sold to us as um, a positive thing. Yes, They're now starting absolutely. to microchip yeah. Yeah. Alzheimer's patients. You'll never lose your, yeah. you never lose your mother yeah. again. Yeah. Um, uh, it's even being suggested, microchip your children. You'll never lose your children. Yeah. And all the rest of it, you'll always know where they are. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so this is why it's so important to get the information out about the real agenda. Yeah. So that people of the reptilians. Could, well, well, of the microchip alone. Yeah, uh, but the, reptili the reptilians are organizing it. Ultimately, yes. Ultimately. Or not, well, maybe not even ultimately. I mean, you know, uh, I've, I've seen so many levels of this rabbit hole from yeah. the, the early days uh, when I was just looking at the, the, the so-called human families, what I call the hybrid families, and, and the way they controlled world events through the cartels of oil and pharmaceuticals and, 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 and intelligence agencies and secret societies. I've gone through so many levels of the rabbit hole since then that um, to think that with with the reptilian element you've got to the bottom of the rabbit hole, I think that's very naive. I think that there are many other elements yet before we get to where this is really being projected from. Yeah. Now, the Mazarina, I was uh, absolutely dedicated to many of the stories that you have been telling, uh, has also a question, uh, Mazarina. Yeah. 
Um, have you ever heard of Harry Oldfield, the inventor? Of yeah, Harry Oldfield. Yeah, I've seen him do a presentation in Edinburgh. Yeah. Okay. With the the um, uh, photographic techniques that allow you to see auric fields and stuff. Yeah. Have you seen the picture with the crack cocaine addict girl? With with a kind of reptilian type figure in the background. Yeah. yeah I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That was my question because I printed it out before, in case you didn't see it. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, he has been photographing what you have been telling all along. Well, this is, this is the point, you see, because although these reptilian and other entities that, that are non-human, it's not just reptilians, they, they seem to be a prime uh, part of the control system, however. Um, they can come into this reality, and, and I don't uh, dismiss for a second that there are some that operate in this reality within the Earth. But, but the, the core of, of their their point of control, however far it goes beyond them, are um, entities that operate just outside of human sight, just outside of this narrow band mm -hmm. of frequency we call visible light. And, 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 and what about this, for instance, that these ancient accounts talk about the gods living among them, and then suddenly the gods don't live mm -hmm. among them. Well, what if the genetic manipulation narrowed the band of human uh, uh, perception to, 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 to inside of the frequency range they operate at. As that band narrowed of our perception, then the gods would no longer, quote, live among us, because mm -hmm. they would not be in our perception uh, range any longer. Right. But as things are, they operate just outside of human perception. And therefore, um, the way they manipulate is by creating, as they have, these hybrid bloodlines, part reptilian, well we're all part reptilian, we all have a reptilian brain and reptilian genetics, but much more. Um, and because everything in the end, the prime reality in this universe is vibration, it's information, waveform information. And the human body computer takes that information, at the five senses turn that vibrational information, the classic is the, the sound, which the ear does, turns it into electrical information communicates it to the brain, and the brain constructs it into digital and what I would call holographic information, which is the, the world that we perceive. Um, and so the, when we talk about genetics, like everything else, including the moon, we see the moon as a physical object. What it is in, in its prime state is a vibrational information field. Mm -hmm. and, and what if um, things like the moon are constructed, not physically, but through information at the waveform level, which then gets decoded through the electrical uh, digital to the holographic as what we see as a so-called physical sphere. Now let's think about this, mm -hmm. because you put a computer game into a computer, what is it? It's a disc, it's just a silver disc, but it's information, waveform information in effect, and then the computer reads that information and it puts on the screen apparently a three-dimensional, the best of them, solid objects which are nothing more than information being read off a disk. And, and, and so what appears on the screen, as in our screen when we decode it, information like that, what appears on the screen of the computer is actually in its prime form, just information. And the moon in its prime form is information. So what if you could um, put the information in at the waveform level? It would naturally become a physical object. Uh, all these things mm -hmm. start to become possible once you realize what the, um, the whole prime reality is. So when we look at genetics, we see kind of something physical in effect. But what it is, mm -hmm. is vibrational information. Now, what happens when you create hybrids between, say, humans and reptilians, that genetic closeness is a vibrational closeness. It's a vibrational compatibility. And that allows those particular hybrid bloodlines to be, in effect, possessed by these entities just outside of human sight, so that their uh, mental, uh, what pass for emotional, uh, uh, capacities and perceptions can be taken over. That can happen much more powerfully when there is a vibrational connection 
through the, the genetic connection, then the same entity is trying to possess the wider range of the human population that doesn't have the same genetic, therefore, vibrational compatibility. So what we're looking at, in effect, is... I use this, this analogy in my talks. Um, you can... Um, you, you see these situations where scientists are working with something, a material that's too dangerous to work directly with. So the material goes into tank, and the scientist is outside of the tank, but puts these long gloves on, and then works inside the tank through the gloves from the outside. If you take that, a vibrational version of that, uh, these entities operate outside of our visible light frequency range, but through the hybrid bloodlines, take the hybrid bloodlines to be those gloves, mm -hmm. they can manipulate inside our reality. So these um, great Illuminati bloodlines like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds, the, the royal families of Europe and, 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 and many others, um, they're like... Um, empty shells. Empty shells. They, they, they are vibrational vehicles. Uh, that allow these entities to manipulate our, our, our reality. And that is why, since the ancient world, um, these families are obsessively interbred with each other. Because when you breed outside of that genetics, then that genetics is diluted very, very quickly. Yeah, right. So, so this is where the interbreeding comes from. People talk about, oh, yeah, the royal genes, you know, it's just snobbery. It's not snobbery. That they, from their perception, see human genetics as a software program. And if you, if you download two software programs that are not the same, then, then both are going to be affected and diluted from the original program. So what they're doing is um, interbreeding to maintain and protect the original program. And I, 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 I've talked to people, big time insiders, um, some, for instance, that have been um, very much on the inside of the Rothschild family, who, who tell me that it, 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 most of it's actually done by um, artificial means. They have sperm banks, which they impregnate women with, of compatible genetics, so that this, as they perceive software program, genetic software program, is constantly protected. And there's another aspect to this, because I talk about the Rothschilds, but I'm not talking about everybody, uh, just everybody called Rothschild. In fact, I'm not even talking about everyone called Rothschild, because many people called Rothschild are as in ignorance as anyone else. It's the core of, the, of that family I'm talking about. But I'm not only talking about people called Rothschild, I'm talking about the Rothschild bloodline. Because what happens is, because of this um, covert... Um, genetic in, interbreeding, not least through artificial means, women are impregnated with the Rothschild um, software, if you like, um, and they bring those children up under other names. Mm -hmm. And then these children under other names turn up as, you know, head of the World Bank, President of the United States, Prime Minister of Britain, uh, um, you know, um, running the system. And because they're not all called Rothschild, people, people don't mm -hmm. make the connection. Yeah, right. If they were all called Rothschild, we'd be saying, what's <laughs> going on here? Bloody yeah. Rothschilds are everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't do it. They're on a different name. But it's the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. bloodline means the genetics. The genetics means the uh, vibrational uh, sympathy. The, the vibrational sympathy means they're massively possessible by these entities. So much, so much to know to put I it can't together. wait till the day that you figure out or hear why and how and you know what's the start that they are so disconnected from love and consciousness that they became the way that they are now and start doing this in the universe because they have to have a starting point as yeah. well so how did that happen well i mean do I, you know I, that already <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about that on saturday but but okay. put it this way this theme this theme of fallen angels uh, which you find around uh, the world, um, ancient and modern. But the theme of the fallen angels is, 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 is part of that. They somehow lost such a connection with their 
true self that um, they got locked into a state of extraordinary levels of insecurity. Uh, when, you, when you have massive insecurity, what do you want to do? You want to control everything because insecure people are ill at ease with um, states of flux. You know, secure people, they just go with the flow and yeah, okay, what happens? You know, I don't want to control anybody. I just want to go with the flow and all this stuff. But when you have massive levels of insecurity, you don't, you, you, you want to know what's going to happen next Tuesday. You know, you don't, you don't want, uh, you don't want it to be um, something that, that you, you don't know what's going to happen because yeah. that, that feeds <clears throat> your insecurity. Um, and so when you, when you look at the way they've structured the world, they put it this way, if, if, if these guys were going to a football match, they would be terribly ill at ease unless they knew what the score was going to be mm -hmm. before the game starts. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because just watching the game and letting it play out and enjoying the game, the, 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 their insecurity, uh, and we're talking levels of insecurity that are almost unimaginable. Um, How did they get so insecure? Us. Well, I mean, you know, I'm 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 not sitting sitting cross legged on a mountain <laughs> with all the answers, but at some point it, it it clearly happened, and and of course, if you want to know the um, score in the football match before the game starts, you have to control both sides and the mm -hmm. referee, and if you look at the way society is structured, that's what they're always seeking to do, to 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 control both sides and 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 all other elements that can. Mm -hmm. change the outcome or make the outcome uncertain so that what, before the process has begun they know what the outcome is going to be uh, and and it's become a almost a work of art in the way that they they do it and how they manipulate us yeah. so the very fact that we're now waking up from it when the 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 pressure and the scale of suppression and manipulation of mind and perception is 24 7 in all areas of our lives just shows the true capacity of human awareness once it remembers what it really is as opposed to what it's been told it is since the, 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 mm -hmm. the time it became conscious. Yeah, that's why I tell from now on you realize that you create the world after your own image. Yes. And but once you start to do that, you know, you yeah. see things change. The, the difference is we create our own reality by the way, by, by what we put out, what, our state of being. Um, is, is, is transmitted as a vibrational field and that right. vibrational field draws in exactly. other vibrational fields that sync with what we're putting out, people, places, ways of life, locations. Right. Right. Now this is the point. Um, we're, that happens whatever. The difference is that what's happened through this great period of human suppression and manipulation is that they have manipulated our sense of perception mm -hmm. of self and the world, thus through that, dictated that vibrational field, exactly. therefore what we're drawing in. Yeah. The, the, the big awakening now is to understand how this process works, exactly, yeah. disconnect from the manipulated sense of exactly. self, open up to the true sense right. of self, and then this um, whole vibrational field we put out transforms, so what we draw in changes dramatically. Yeah. That's why more and more people start to talk about feeling now. Yeah. Because feeling has nothing to do with thinking. And feeling never lies. If you feel, yeah, I'm inspired, then it's true. It's you like, cannot fake it. It's, it's what people call, um, often call intuition. And, and yes. I have to say that um, from, from all the things that have happened to me, um, I think the thing that changed my life most was 20 years ago. I decided that when my head and my intuition were at odds, was always going to go with my intuition. And it gets you into some scrapes uh, here and there because that intuitive knowing is coming from another level of awareness right. which doesn't see situations in the same way that this does. Um, from that level of awareness, it can see the river from source to sea. The, the, what I call mind can only see the next turn on the river. So what's happening on the river before the next turn can be perceived in dramatically different terms by these two levels of awareness. Mine can see it in, in, in small terms. Uh, oh my God, it's a disaster. Oh my goodness me. And, but, but the eye levels of awareness are looking at the same situation and saying that is essential because of what's coming. And, 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 and so what 
what happened to me is I got my mind out of the way. People say he's gone out of his mind. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank round you. of applause. <laughs> Um, uh, 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 and uh, into some level of consciousness. And right. what happens then is um, you, you have some scrapes because you're now operating at odds with how mind-dominated humanity thinks you should act and what you should say and what you should think. But after a while, the mind observes, this is my experience anyway, the mind observes that when you follow your intuition, um, although it, you may get yourself into some challenges, it all works out in the end. Right. And it works out not despite what has happened, but because of it. Yes. And, and at this point, the mind starts to say, well, actually, it does work. And, and the mind and the intuition in most people still, though it's changing, um, are at war with each other. How often? This is what I really love to do. Yeah. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no right. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and what happens when, when, when mind and um, uh, intuition come together is the war stops. And so, I, you know, I've reached the point in my own life where when, when my intuition says, I need to do this, my mind goes, okay, let's go. The war stops. The, the, that, that battle's finished. And, exactly. And I can tell you, uh, it, ah. it's oh, it's a freedom beyond words. Yes. Beyond, beyond, beyond yes. words. In fact, virtually everything that's worth knowing is beyond words. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. <laughs> okay, that was our talk with David Icke. Now, yeah, our talk with, uh, we listened to David because he has lots to tell and sometimes he gives speeches that last four, five, six, seven hours Eight, ten. as if time doesn't exist. That's and the first indeed, section. Time <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> hey, thank you very much and we keep in touch. Huh? And you create the world after your own image. Hey, <laughs> you better go for it. <laughs>